Louisiana probably has the richest heritage of any state when it comes to decoy carving and collecting, and that's for a lot of reasons. We have more world champions in South Louisiana than anywhere else in the world. You know, it's, we got it licked. We got it under control. But decoy carving is a dying art. Once passed down through generations of hunters, the custom of hand-making duck decoys now is practiced by only a handful of Louisiana's outdoorsmen. I actually read an article almost 30 years ago in Louisiana Sportsman magazine by the guy, Mr. Ira Bordelon. Uh, just happened to contact him and just as friendly as he could be, called me over to his house, kind of pointed me in the right direction, gave me a block of wood and bada bang, I kind of knocked one out kind of fast, took it back to him, showed it to him, gave me another block of wood. This time it kind of gave me some good direction. And this is a little teal that I got to do with him. And again, I did this about 25 or so years ago. And I was very proud of it and wanted to continue doing it, but still kind of lost after just one bird. And then Mr. Ira passed away and I was lost again. You know, and until about four years ago. I really didn't think I'd ever compete in a show. And I, I compete as, a, as an amateur and as a novice. I mean, there's certain different categories that you compete in, all the way up to professionals. And uh, uh, my very first show that I got in, it was in La Rose. And uh, I showed a little green winged teal and a ruddy duck. And they won everything they could win. You know, best of show, best of species. Um, and I was kind of hooked in. <laughs> Allen considers himself lucky and fortunate for the opportunity to showcase his craft on a world stage. We went to Maryland to compete. A little out of your area, different birds, I'm sure, different species. And tell me about this bird, leading up to it, how long it took to make and what it did. I spent almost a year on this. And um, I carved it for my daughter. And when I took it to the world, I was so impressed. It's, um, when the guy held it up, that was it, <laughs> you know? It's a hell of a feeling. I mean, people from Russia, uh, Germany, uh, Alaska, Canada, certainly a lot of South Louisiana carvers. It took the world, I was uh, very proud of it. I just took my time, um, I repainted that bird two or three times. And again, you know, when I, when I have world champions looking over my shoulder, I gotta change, I gotta I, I just try to make it a little bit better, and a little bit better. And again, I didn't start off doing decorative birds. I started off doing something very simple, kind of work your way up. I know you don't sell your ducks, but what would an award winning, maybe not necessarily the champion, but a ribbon winning bird, what would it sell for? Um, most of these guys around here, anywhere from three grand to it can go up to whatever, eight, ten, twelve grand. You know. And why don't you sell yours? I have too much time in them, and uh, again, I do it as a hobby. I do it. I enjoy them. You know, I enjoy seeing them sitting on a shelf. I just, uh, I enjoy giving them to my children. God, people offer me thousands of dollars for it. It's, it's just no way. You know. And I told him I carved that for my daughter. She cried more than I did. <laughs> but uh, my daughter's very special.
To get full appreciation of the tedious work of a decoy carver, we tried our hand at carving from a rough wood block. You know, in duck calling, uh, champion duck callers, they'll tell you there's calling to kill ducks and there's calling for the judges. Is it the same with carving? Do you have some that you like to do a certain way that you like, but knowing what judges look for, you actually have to do something a little different? Um, yes, with, with decoratives, yes. Um, judges are very, very pickle, particular about what they want. And some judges prefer to see a lot of air under the wings. Some of them don't want to see as much air. Some of them um, uh, just don't like pintails. <laughs> you know, they'd rather see you carve something else, you know? And you know your birds better. But you're looking at something else, you say, well, that's not near as good, but that's what the judge like. I spend about a year on a bird like this in that pintail, and there's just so many layers of paint. Uh, the thing to do is always, if you want to be good at something, hang out with people that are better than you, and you'll learn a lot. Tell us about the woods that are used. Tupelo is primary. Tupelo is the main wood that we use. And there's only certain parts of the tree that you could use. You can't go all the way up the trunk and use it. You don't see very much grain in this wood at all. So you try to cut with the grain of the wood. You know, you're not battling on like this breast and whatnot. It'll give you a little trouble because the grain is going this way, and you're going to be kind of kind of cutting against the grain on that. But so, what do you love about carving? Relaxing. It just relaxes you, and then you create something that um, I've always seen other people's decoys, and just amazed at what they do with a piece of wood. It's like golf or anything else, fishing, music, whatever. You're, you're just you're hooked. Oh, when we were kids, we we didn't go anywhere to hunt or fish, and we stayed right here. You know, we stayed right here. We had the, the Chifuncta River, the Tanjapoho River, Bidico Creek, the lake. We grabbed a P-Row and a little flatboat, uh, just took off on foot and just started going. And the squirrels, the rabbits, the, you know, deer, whatever, it was there. We need young people. We need young people. It's a great opportunity to be creative. If you want, make them and sell them. Make money off of it. Um, uh, could you imagine carving your own string of birds to go hunting? You know, I'm hunting over my own birds. They're gonna last forever. Yeah. You know, they'll last forever. It's, uh, you know, pass them down to your children, or your grandchildren. It's, uh, it's something that'll be here forever and ever. We've even got an association called the Louisiana Waterfowl Collectors Harvest Guild. And it's an organization, a nonprofit group that's made up of a lot of professionals, a lot of amateurs who not only showcase their products and they hold competitions, they also invite the public to come in and get involved and learn it. Very generous people. It's probably going on here in South Louisiana longer than any place else in the country. Uh, it's recognized more up in the north and northeast, eastern coast, but they found decoys here you know, in South Louisiana, they're certainly older than the birds up on the East Coast. And uh, again, it used to be a family tradition down there. Everybody down the bayou, if your grandfather did it, you know, their son did it, and then their sons, and it's just not happening anymore. It's certainly turning into a dying one.